It's when you partition your data into four quarters, I guess. You got the definition of the first quartile, definition of the second quartile, and the third quartile. So you have data distributed. You got Q1, Q2, Q3. This is what they mean by quarters. Your data is distributed here, different variables. Okay? The first quartile is defined to be the 25th percentile. The second quartile is defined to be the 50th. The third's the 75th. So here's what I did. The reason I asked you to determine these percentiles, you guys notice this? Was because you were also computing at the very same time what? Quartile. So what was the first quartile here? What was it? 88. What was the 50th percentile? What is it? Oh, that was our example. What was that value? 118. What's the, what's the third quartile or the 75th percentile? What was that answer? What was it? 125. 88, 118, 125. So anyone that has a score on that sheet, a test score above 125, is in the what? They're above the, they're in that third, they're in the above the third, they're above the third quartile. And you may sit there and go, oh my God, what does it mean to be above the third quartile? You're above the 75th percentile. See, that's what it's defined to be by definition. Third quartile is a 75th percentile. Second quartile is a 50th percentile. First quartile is a 25th percentile. So if you're above that third quartile, you're above the 70, 75th percentile. Okay. If you're below the first quartile, you're below the what? 25th percentile. And um, you know, schools, again, are ranked. Schools are ranked, even districts are ranked, not by percent, they're actually ranked by what's known as deciles. I could define deciles for you as well. Okay, For example, the first decile is the 10th percentile. The second decile is a sec, uh, 20th percentile. The third and so on, all the way up to the 9th decile, which is the 90th percentile. So, when you read the LA Times and you look at your son or daughter school or any school, and you guys see that the school is in the 20th decile, what does that mean to you? It's, it's what? In the 20th percentile. Now, how many people here work at schools, like elementary schools or middle schools? How many people? Do you ever hear them talk about being a two school, or a one school, or a three school? Pay attention. Some of them say, we're a low two school. That's the language they use. That's the code. Being a low two school means they're in the second decile, the low second decile. They're in the low 20s of a percentile, the low 20s. Pay attention to that language. Ask your principal. Ask the principal. And then be prepared for what? How about this? Maybe we should ask you guys to do that for homework. Go ask your, your, child, your, your son or daughter's principal. Ask them, hey, where does the school rank? See what they tell you. OK? Anybody else have kids? Anyone else? Go ask. Ask the principal. Hey, where does the school rank in terms of their standardized test scores? What deciles, percentiles, or quartiles? See what they tell you. <laughs> See what they say. They may say, we're in the, and you just notice, they might even say it in a way that's what? Very positive. <laughs> we're in the 15th percentile, or yeah. 
And I'm, we're very excited because last year we were in the 12th, you know. So we are increased. Well, what does that mean? You, you know. Okay, so now you guys know this, and this is why you're taking this. This is why you go through what you're doing. Okay, you guys okay with that? We'll, we'll sort of give you some last sort of information here, some definitions. We'll see how to use these things, but, you know, fine. Here we go. Interquartile range. Definition. The interquartile range is the Q3 minus Q1. Definition. Semi-quartile range. Semi-interquartile range. Q3 minus Q1 over 2. And then you have the mid-quartile range, or the mid-quartile. Q1 plus Q3 divided by 2. Semi-interquartile range. It's in your book. The semi-interquartile range. And then you have the 1090 percentile range. And that would be P90 minus P10. So um, all these things you can compute. And what they're used for is to help describe the distribution of your data. OK, so some of these values, you know, you can compute. OK, so like, for instance, Q3, this is 125, right, minus 88. 125 minus 88 divided by 2. 88 plus 125 divided by 2. P90 minus P10. We did that. Uh, P90 was 142 minus uh, 0.5. And P10. What was P10? You guys did that one too. 63.5. So let's see what kind of answers you guys get. 37, OK. What's 37 divided by 2? OK. And what happens when you add them and divide by 2? 106 point. OK, and then this 10 to 90 range? OK, so next time we'll use these things to look at some distributions, OK? All right, Eddie, cut it off.